Well, welcome everyone to the Christian Leaders Fellowship online world conference this year. I am so glad that you're a part of this and I'm just thankful that I've been invited to speak at one of the empowerment talks and excited to be here with you. My name is Jerry Lawson. And I'm the founding pastor of Daystar Church in uh, Alabama. We have campuses in North Alabama as well as in central Uganda. I'm also the president of 24todouble.com, which is a coaching and training network uh, for pastors around the world. We're in about 23 countries. And today I'm excited to talk to you on this subject, pastoring through the pandemic. And I'm going to give you 10 crucial steps that every pastor should make while pastoring through this pandemic. Now what I'm going to share with you today is going to be very practical. Uh, so I hope you'll grab something you can take notes with, a pen and paper, or maybe in your phone somewhere, because these are specific steps that I think you, as a Christian leader, and especially all the pastors listening to me, should take. All right, so I want to start with a verse, uh, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, sort of a guiding principle. And here's what it says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. When everything else is changing and you wake up every morning wondering what crazy thing is going to happen next, it is refreshing to know that God never changes and he's made a promise he cannot and will not change. However, he didn't promise that the church wouldn't change, that our world wouldn't change, and that how we do ministry wouldn't change. So let me give you the first of these 10 crucial steps I think you ought to take. Here's number one. Stop waiting on things to go back to normal because they're not going to. 65% of Christians are not going to the church they were attending pre-COVID. Now, we don't know some of them are not in church at all. Some of them have changed churches, but let that sink in just for a minute. 65% of Christians who were going to church are not at that church anymore. That is a staggering reality. We also know 22% have never attended an online service or have been back in person since the pandemic began. That is a huge number of people. 32% tell us they've stopped church altogether in all forms. And 50% of all millennials have stopped church altogether. Now, too many pastors and Christian leaders have taken the wait and see approach as if when things settle down, when everybody gets the vaccine, things are gonna be normal again. I wanna just start out by telling you, normal has gone and it's not coming back. The church has changed forever and it's not gonna get back to the kind of church we were uh, accustomed to or used to. But the church has always changed. I mean, think about it. Throughout history, the way we do church and, and the way people have engaged with the gospel has been changing. Uh, we don't have to freak out about that. But now more than ever, we need to remember that while the message of Jesus never changes, the methods have to change. So now's the time to be innovative, to think outside of the box. Pastors, I would encourage you to gather together with influencers in your church and with other pastors and find creatives, problem solvers, and find people who are possibility thinkers. And think about what we can do to engage people from where we are. The time for complaining is over. If you've got friends, you've got other leaders in the church, and all they're doing is complaining, leave them out of these meetings. Get together and rally around the words of Jesus in Luke 1 and 37 that says, nothing is impossible with God. Let me speak this right to your heart, Pastor. You're in the will of God and you're doing the work of God, so you can expect the wisdom of God and the power of God to lead you through it, okay? So that's number one. Number two is this, connect with people on a personal level. So valuable, so important. Your cell phone should be blowing up right now, Pastor. Text messages, phone calls, tele-counseling with people. I mean, you've got to connect, keep detailed, uh, notes on, on who you've been talking to and who you've been following up with because right now people are craving connections and we've got to connect however we can. So connect with your uh, leaders regularly, ministry leaders, community leaders, volunteer leaders, uh, giving leaders. Stay connected. 
And don't make any assumptions because people are disillusioned right now. And if you're not seeing them in church and you're not having conversations with them, you might be assuming some things that, uh, that are not true about them. So reach out to them and talk to them. Now at Daystar, we take a cascading approach to connectivity. So I'm connecting with staff members and I'm connecting with elders of our church. And, and then the staff members are connecting with the elderly in the church and with their volunteers. And the volunteers are helping us to connect with all the members of the church. And we're just keeping a very, um, very well put together detailed plan of connectivity. We're not making any assumptions right now. And we're not neglecting old school methods of connections. You know, I'm not above just going to someone's front porch and having a cup of coffee with them to connect. Uh, so, so make sure you're connecting on a relational level. Number three is this, connect with people on a digital level. Just like your phone should be blowing up right now, social media should be blowing up. And if you're one of those leaders that says, I'm not really into social media, yeah, that's not good enough anymore. <laughs> you're gonna have to be. You ought to be doing Facebook Live videos. You ought to be doing blog posts. You ought to have question and answer sessions uh, via social media or doing online connections. And if, and if you're like me, I've always been involved in social media and I try to take an approach where I don't overexpose myself. Um, and so I, I would normally uh, just have one or two posts a day. What I'm doing right now is I'm monitoring engagement more. What am I doing that is getting a response? What am I doing that is helping people to engage? And those are the things that I'm leaning into more right now. So you wanna use technology to have small groups. I was reading recently that 60% of people who go to online church, somewhere with their church, they say their church does no other digital connection whatsoever. So you wanna do Zoom small groups and you wanna do Facebook groups, maybe a Facebook prayer group, just some way to keep people connected. Uh, don't neglect outdoor small groups and social distancing groups because connection is so valuable right now. All right, that's the first three. Number four is this, invite your online audience back into the building. Now there's enough information out there right now about the pandemic for people to make their own decisions about gathering. I think it's our responsibility to create a good space for them to come back. We, we say it like this, it's a safe, sanitized, and spiritually significant worship experience. And, and I unapologetically invite people back. Pastors, don't be shy. You create that safe environment that you feel safe bringing your family to and then unapologetically invite them to come back. In the first weeks of the pandemic, pastors were asked how they felt like their church's faith would, would uh, respond during the pandemic, and 50% of pastors said they believed that their faith of their congregation would grow. More recently, however, pastors were asked that same question, and only 20% of pastors believe their congregation is growing in faith. You know what I'm talking about, Pastor. You're feeling what I'm feeling. So this may be simple and, and, and it may seem like it's not necessary for me to say it, but I wanna challenge you, Pastor, look right into that camera as I am right now, next Sunday, and, and talk to your congregation about their spiritual health. Invite them back into church, it, it, create a safe environment, and then tell them it's a safe environment. Tell them of the importance of gathering and tell them that you respect their decision. Okay, we don't wanna guilt anybody into any decision, but you wanna give them the information and invite them back. All right, number five. If you're gonna, uh, number four, if you're gonna invite the congregation back, number five, give them a reason to return. Here's an interesting little anecdote. So right as the pandemic, just before the pandemic started, uh, we brought on staff uh, a young man to be one of our campus pastors, one of our largest congregations. And um, he, he told me just recently, many months later, uh, that he connected with someone in the community, invite, asked him about church, and they said, well, you know, my church is kind of a large church, uh, and they're doing tickets, you know. You have to register to come to church, and it's just probably full, so really we haven't been back to church since the pandemic. He said, oh, well, what church do you go to? And the guy said, I go to Daystar. He said, well, hey, I'm your new pastor. Uh, I'd like to meet you. And by the way, there's plenty of room. Come on out. You see, what happened is for only about two or three weeks when we weren't sure how many people would come back and we wanted to be very careful not to have too many people, we did an online registration. 
just so we would know how many people were coming. We didn't do it again after two or three weeks, but several months later, this guy still thinks he can't come back to church. He's obviously not been watching online. And it just highlights the reality that there is so much miscommunication and a general lack of communication. As I said, we're working hard to get our message out there, but still people aren't hearing it. So pastors, somehow, creatively, you've got to break through the noise and get the message out there that you are open for business. 69% of churches are meeting again in person. If you're not able to meet in person, you still got to break through, you got to speak to people. So, so whatever you're doing, announce, a, here, here's a good idea, announce a big felt needs sermon series. Felt needs means something that they wake up feeling, you know, like I'm stressed out or I'm afraid or I'm, you know, my marriage is falling apart. Those are, are felt needs series. I recently did a series called, Is This the End? Because there's so much crazy stuff been going on. People have been wondering, is this the end? So I did an end time series. Uh, we did a bulk mailer, hit the whole community and man, our church attendance just exploded. You know, we actually right now, as I film this talk, we're actually seeing attendance higher than pre than than uh, pre COVID a year ago. It, it's crazy. That's in person attendance is higher and online attendance is higher. But we broke through. So find a way to do that. It could be a social media campaign. It could be a, a bulk mailer. It could be a billboard campaign, or it could be a door to door thing. And I'm not talking about uh, breaking social distancing guidelines. You could just do door hangers and, and get your volunteers to hang those doors. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but now's the time to break through. Uh, we did an outdoor carnival, socially distanced, safe, outdoors. We did game day where we had people wear their favorite um, jersey, their team day jersey. You know, there, there's something that you can do if you'll get innovative and get your message out there. All right, number six, accept the reality of a hybrid church. Now, 52% of churchgoers say they prefer to attend worship in person. Now, now think about that for a minute. That's good. The majority want to come in the building, but that still leaves 48% who say, no, I'd actually prefer to worship at home. Now, now why is that? I, I was thinking about that as I read that statistic from the Barna website. And here's what I realized, it's easier to go to church online. It's more convenient to go to church online. It's safer to go to church online, even if you have a very safe uh, worship environment, it's still safer to stay home. There's less judgment online. You know, if my kid's making loud noises, nobody's gonna judge me for that. If I didn't wear the right clothes, nobody's gonna, you know, just what, however people think about church. So, so here, here's the reality, most churches are going hybrid right now. They're in person with some people gathering and they're online. And the reality is people have been exposed to a different way to do church and they're not going back. Except the reality of a hybrid church. See, we're going to have to stop seeing online church as something that we relegate to some um, young intern who understands technology and pastors and leaders, we gonna, we're going to have to engage. We're going to have to find how to show love digitally online, how to portray the fruits of the Spirit online. We're going to have to figure out how to do connections online. And we have to realize that online worship is not a necessary evil temporarily. But it's a bold new frontier for the church to lean into. And I don't have all the answers to that, but I do know I need to lean in, I need to learn, I need to be reading, I need to be uh, growing as a leader and realize a hybrid church is the new church and I don't think it's gonna go away. That's number six. Number seven, remember why the church and your church matters. Remember why the church and your church matters. Pastors, don't forget that. Where I live, churches have been declared non-essential services. And I've been declared as a pastor a non-essential employee. All right. Uh, by the way, liquor stores have been declared essential. Now, as, as mind-blowing as that is, you as a pastor and as a leader and I, we should not be surprised at that. I mean, this is all a part of prophetic end times. We, we know these are the signs of the times. But don't forget this fact. What you do matters. You matter. 
Sharing the message of hope matters. The gospel of Jesus matters. In fact, the most essential service in all of the world is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know where you're hearing this message, but I heard an amen from around the world right now. Please don't forget that. Please don't let science push you out. Please don't let the healthcare industry push you out. Don't let politics push you out. And don't let how you feel convince you that what you're doing is non-essential. What you're doing is the most essential thing in the history of the world. During the Spanish flu, it was the most essential thing. During the Ebola outbreaks in Africa, preaching the gospel was essential. And today, during the COVID-19 crisis, preaching the gospel is essential. Because while the world is gripped with fear of COVID-19, you know this fact, pastors and leaders, there is a more deadly and more contagious virus that is spreading rapidly and unchecked and undetected largely. And that sickness is as old as the world itself. It is the virus of sin and death. And sin doesn't just kill the body, it kills the soul and sends the soul to hell. And you, my friend, and I, we, we are the only people who have the vaccine, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't forget that. Don't devalue yourself during this time. Don't sit on the sidelines and think what you're doing is not important. What you're doing, in fact, is the most important thing that's being done right now. Amid all the pressure and all the fear all the confusion of COVID-19, don't forget why you do what you're doing. Ephesians 5 and 16, I was just reading this whole chapter uh, this week. It says, make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. See, what our, what our world has done, what our, our culture has said is that the church doesn't matter right now. What we really have to do right now is we have to convince people to wear their mask. What we really have to do right now is get that vaccine out to everyone. What we have to do right now is figure out how to get back into school and, you know, get normal life. What we've got to do right now is get business, get the economy going. What we've got to do right now is get the politics all under control. There's so many things that people say, religion is fine, it's important for some people, but right now we're going to put it on the shelf and deal with more important matters. Let, let me tell you what God says. He said, make the most of this opportunity because the days are evil. What we're, we're hearing people say isn't, and, and a lot of church members and even some leaders are, are, are tending to say this, that because the days are so crazy right now, we're just going to take a wait and see approach. But the Bible says, because the days are evil, make the most of those days. Pastors, I want to encourage you, I want to inspire you that Jesus knew, God knew the times we would be living in when he wrote the words I just read, because the days are evil, we must double down, we must innovate, we must pray fast, seek the face of God, dig into his word, find creative ways to present that message of hope to a world that needs it so much. Don't forget that what you do matters. And that kind of leads me to number eight. Tell your congregation why their giving matters. Tell your congregation why their giving matters. Now, most churches are suffering financially. We know that. The attendance is suffering. The finances are suffering. A recent survey said 20% of Christians admit that they're giving less now than they were before COVID-19. And we also know that there's something called the halo effect that when you ask a, or any person a question that is sort of ethically connected, that a halo shows up over their head and they answer the way that we want them to answer. So if 20% say they're giving less, probably 40% are giving less. Uh, it's a scary truth. Pastors, don't be too timid to ask your church members to give during this time. I don't mean make an announcement of it. I don't mean make a plea like we're suffering and we're worried, but, but make it an inspirational talk like I just gave you from Ephesians 5 and 16, that this moment matters more than any other moment in your life, and this is the moment to spread the gospel, not to disengage. That same Barna report I referenced earlier said 23% of churches in America, and it's probably true around the world, 
will close permanently due to the pandemic. 23% of churches will close permanently due to the pandemic. Pastors, why don't you step up on your pulpit this Sunday and boldly prophesy that this church will never close its doors permanently until the second coming of Jesus Christ. We're going to be about the mission of Jesus. We're going to be doing what we're called to do until the time Christ takes us all home. Say it boldly. Even if you don't See it in the numbers. Even if, if you're struggling, I know maybe I'm talking to some pastors right now that you're, you're right in the throes of the most difficult season of your church. Stand up in faith and challenge your church to do the works of Jesus now more than they ever had. Here's what we know. While churches have been declared non-essential, divorce rates have gone up. Suicide rates, depression rates are surging right now. There's more child abuse. I'm not making this stuff up. Pastors, Google it. You'll find it to be true. There's more drug and alcohol abuse. Why? Because people have been, have been disconnected. Satan, the devil, is using the pandemic to advance his kingdom. And, and too many Christians have decided to take a wait-and-see approach. Even pastors just sort of press pause and, and re-engage later. We can't do that, church. The devil is not uh, taking a wait-and-see approach. He's taking a calculated approach. So we need to remind our congregation, now is the time to give. Now is the time to go, to serve. Now is the time to evangelize, to share your faith. Now is the time to worship God and be more committed than ever before. This is the moment. We have to make the most of this moment because the days are evil. All right. I've given you eight of the ten. I, I did it fast. Uh, I can't believe I'm so fast with this. I want to give you two more. and I want, These are all about you pastors and church leaders, the other two things you need to be doing, number nine, you need to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Uh, pastor, I have talked, uh, as I mentioned, I'm with 24todouble.com, and I have talked to so many pastors who are struggling. I was talking to a pastor just recently who is one of the most bright spots to me in 24 to Double right now. He's a guy who came out of business. He's sharp. He's young, uh, an African-American guy who uh, took over as pastor, and I'm so proud of him. He took over the church he was attending, and, and he is bright and, and committed. And he told me recently, he said, you know, Pastor, I feel like I just need to quit. Maybe I made the mistake. Maybe I wasn't supposed to be doing this. And in my spirit, I knew the opposite was true. He was called for this moment. He was supposed to be in this moment. And the devil and the pressures of, of, of church ministry are impacting him so greatly. Listen, pastors are dropping out of ministry. You know this. It's always been a difficult calling. It's always been a difficult space. The burnout rate has always been high among pastors. But right now, it's even more difficult. And I want to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Pastors, you've got to Sabbath. You see, God designed us in the way that we simply cannot function at our best without Sabbath moments without Sabbath time where we step away and we press pause and we spend time in His presence and we are rejuvenated and we say no to everything else but time with God. We say no to some good things so that we're saying yes to the best things. Counseling someone is a good thing. Reaching out, talking to people, connecting, those are good things. These other eight things I mentioned, all really, really good things. But the best thing is your time alone with God. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, I'll just confess that this pandemic, I'm, you know, there, there's sort of fight or flight kind of people, you know, and I'm a fight kind of person. When, when, when a problem comes up, I want to grab the thing and, and, and sort of take charge. And what that's caused me to do, uh, unfortunately, is to not spend as much time with God. You know, I, I think about John Wesley. I read his memoirs, and one time he, he wrote, um, uh, he wrote, I have a busier day today than most any day that I've had recently, something like that. And, and then he said these words, I must spend even more time with God today. I tend to do the opposite if I'm honest. When I'm super busy and I have more to do, I tend to cut my time with God short or I'm going to be real honest, sometimes I just cut it out. That's not right. And pastors, you're not designed to be able to function 
without your time with God. Sabbath is one of the Ten Commandments. I mean, you wouldn't violate the Seventh Commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery and think that'll give you a healthy marriage. So why would we violate the Fourth Commandment, the Sabbath, and think that's going to give us a healthy ministry or a healthy spiritual life? So pastors, take some time. Get along with God. My model that I've always had, I'll just share this with you. I want to give a moment with God every day. That could be an hour's devotion or, you know, 15-minute devotion. But every day, a moment with God. Every morning or every month, I want a whole morning with God. Okay? So a moment per day, a morning per month. The whole morning. It's usually a Monday morning, 8 to 12. I'm prayer walking. I'm talking. I'm reading. I'm worshiping. A moment per day, a morning per month. Then I like to do two days per quarter. Once a quarter, on my calendar, there is a Sabbath break. Nobody schedules events or or, or appointments during that time. Two days, just me and God. Sometimes I go somewhere overnight, but most of the time it's just all day long with God. Sometimes it's, it's even golf. I got worship music going. It's just me walking the golf course and I'm talking with God. That's part of my Sabbath. That's fine. And then also once a year, a week with God. I do a prayer retreat once a year. So it's a moment every day. It's a morning every month. It's two days every quarter. And it's a week every year. Now, I've already confessed to you that I've been breaking that. But I want to challenge you to find what your plan is. Double down on it. Do what I'm doing. I am recommitting myself to that plan. That's number nine. Take care of yourself. And here's number ten, the last one. It's also for you, pastors. Find a ministry partner to learn from and grow with. Don't do this alone. Find a ministry partner to learn from and to grow with. I am so glad you have found Christian Leaders Fellowship. I'm glad you're at this conference. You're doing number 10 right now. There's so many ways that you can do that. And with CLF, there's so many other ways for you to reconnect. I'm proud of that. I'd like to also invite you to connect with 24todouble.com. We would love to help you. It's a two-year growth process designed to double your leadership ability, double your church's attendance, and your leadership and ministry platform. If you go there today, I want to give you a conference discount of 20%. It's already discounted. Just for this conference, though, we're going to add a 20% conference discount. Type in the coupon code CLF2020. CLF2020 into 24todouble.com. And and again, stay connected with Christian Leaders Fellowship. This is helping you. I'm so glad you're a part of this. Listen, I want to just tell you, when God called you into ministry, He knew the pandemic was coming. He knew that you would be pastoring through a pandemic. He provided me. He provided Christian Leaders Fellowship. He provided your spouse or the other people around you. And He provided your community with you. It needs you. Your community needs you. Your congregation, your spouse, your family needs you. So I want you to know God called you for this season and you're equipped to do it. You may not feel like you're capable, but you know what? You're not the expert on that. God's the expert and he called you. And I like to say this, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. You just just redouble your efforts. You just believe in and trust in your calling and believe that God is going to equip you as you need it. You have what it takes. Finally, let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now for every pastor and every leader who's listening to my voice right now. I thank you for calling them together for this moment. I thank you for calling them to serve and lead in your church during the pandemic. You knew this moment would happen. You knew these leaders would be there And I just speak in faith over them that they have, we have, we have what it takes. God, anoint every effort. Give them boldness and courage and wisdom. Provide financially for the church. And I pray that the gospel of Jesus would be proclaimed. I pray that you would bless pastors' spouses, their families, their children, their homes, their personal finances, their personal health. I pray for protection, and I just speak your blessing now over these pastors who care so much that they are serving your kingdom and they are learning and growing in this moment. 
This we say in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said with me, Amen.